everybody and welcome back to the channel and I am super hyped for today because today Mojang has released the first 1.20 pre-release. So what all is new in this pre-release? Well, let's find out. First of all, if we use the slash kill command, we now get a separate death message which just says that you were killed and doesn't say fell out of the world like it used to. And if we die due to being outside of the world border, let's see how this works. Oh, it does have its own death message. Okay, it says left the confines of this world. So that'll also happen if the world border squishes you. Uh, so if it's coming inwards and squishes you. A bug has been fixed where if you travel through a nether portal, the animation doesn't infinitely play on the other side. And it should fade away. Although it doesn't seem to. This might not have been fixed. But what has been fixed is that if you load up the nether in an old world, it'll no longer corrupt your world, um, which is very good. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's only when I think I found a bug. Okay, I'm going to go report it. I'll be right back. Previously, if you'd switch to spectator mode, you'd move slightly down. But this is no longer the case, although it does appear that you can still clip through blocks. Oh, wait, that's because I'm in spectator mode. Okay, so wait, if I do this... Oh, no, 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 no. You don't even move up off the ground at all. That is... or down. Interesting. Next up, we have a parity change in a very old bug fix. As soon as you start punching a block, it'll now show the breaking animation. Let's check this out with a block that uh, takes much longer to break. Yeah, here we go. So this is a parity change to match Bedrock Edition, as well as a very old bug fix, and I love this change. I was just talking about it the other day with someone in real life and saying, you know what, I love how on Bedrock Edition, as soon as you start breaking a block, you could see the breaking animation, and now they've changed it, and I'm so happy about this. Wool carpets and beds can now be dyed any color, even if they're not white to begin with, which is a really cool change. And as you can see, we can dye the brown wool red, we can dye it whatever color we want, and uh, we can even dye the red wool into white wool. So there you go. What do you know? And the maintains farmland tag has been removed from pumpkins and melons because they don't maintain farmland and they destroy it instantly whenever one is placed on farmland. Loot tables are now randomly generated deterministically, which, according to the change notes on Reddit, says that basically it'll be the same in every world, or not in every world, but in the same world, in the same seed, at the same location, you'll always get the same loot, which was already the case before, but I, I'm not really sure how it's changed, but it definitely was in some way as well as some changes to the server.properties. And keep in mind, this is only the changes in this single pre-release, not all the 1.20 changes. So if you do want to see that, I will have a video coming out on that hopefully very soon. Um, that'll list all the changes that are coming in Java Edition 1.20, as well as most of the changes in Bedrock 1.20 as well. So I am very excited to make that for you guys. Anyways, guys, that is about it for this video, so if you've enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to see all the 1.20 changes, make sure to hit the subscribe button with notifications turned on so you don't miss that video. Let me know in the comments what feature you're most excited for in 1.20. Personally, it's the armor trims for me. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a great day, and have yourselves a great 1.20 pre-release cycle. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Calcium, Capitalism, Motor and goodbye.